Okay, thanks, uh, Jerry, Greg, and Sean. Um, I did uh, notice we had one question come in in the chat box from Scott Mueller, and it referred to is uh, a 50% point in a green bar a good cutoff that would indicate that, uh, that whether or not issues would exist on the farm. Greg, do you want to briefly go ahead and kind of recap that answer for that question? Sure. So, yeah, 50% is kind of our, our initial screen, um, if you will. So, if you've got at least 50% green in those high priority score bars, we're going to say that there's there's a very low likelihood of actually having a resource concern on, on that farm for that area. Um, that's not to say that there that the planner couldn't determine that there was in fact a resource concern there, but uh, you know, in the absence of other information, you know, uh, the, the producer was concerned about that particular area of his farm, about odors coming from a certain area, and even though it showed maybe 50% or a little bit more green, um, if, if he's concerned and he's getting complaints, then obviously that would lean toward being a, a resource concern there. But in general, without other information, just using NACSAT. If you've got a 50% green score bar, we're going to say that's probably a good indication that you're not likely to have a resource concern. Okay, Rick Kelsch has asked if you'd share more about how this integrates with the Iowa State University assessment tool. Well, I, I can take that one. This is Greg again. So um, the AMPAT tool that Iowa State University developed um, was actually uh, originally a precursor to NACSAT. And the, um, the group that developed the AMPAT tool and, you know, kind of enlisted the help of other universities to, to take a look at it. And they realized, well, the AMPAT does a really good job of identifying different management practices that you can use to address resource concerns, but there was a void in, in trying to identify whether you had a problem in the first place. And that's, that's really how NACSAT was born. So they, they kind of did the, uh, the second part first, if you will, um, under the ISU uh, AMPAT tool, and then develop NACSAT as kind of the precursor for using the AMPAT tool. So they, they mesh very well together um, because you had a lot of the same folks working on both tools. Um, NACSAT is supposed to help you answer the question, do you have a problem? And AMPAT then helps answer the, the question, if, if you do have a problem, what do you do about it? And a question came in from Dennis. Are the practices weighted in terms of quantities discharged to derive a total score? So it's, I, I realize that uh, in the presentations you indicated it's more of a qualitative than a quantitative, but looks like there's a uh, kind of a question related to the gray in between the black and the white on that. So does anybody want to tackle that one? This is Sean. I'll, I'll be happy to try and answer that one. <clears throat> so the there all of the tool does have weighted questions throughout and again it still is a qualitative more than a quantitative type of tool um, but even within that we as a as a team when we felt that there was adequate data out there showing that there were particular practices that had a greater impact on these emissions um, then we did give those particular areas throughout um, a, a greater, heavier um, influence on your final score. Um, now, in the lack of that information in the literature, um, we quite often just left them as relatively equal um, influence on your final score, unless we did have some, some actual data that would support weighting those types of questions. 